So I watched an interview the other day with Anthony Magnabosco on Tom Jumps, T Jumps uh, channel. And we are going to be streaming on the subject of street epistemology this coming Wednesday. Now, Anthony Magnabosco, if you do not know who he is, he is probably the leading light of a practice known as street epistemology. Um, he's the, if he's not, he didn't quite invent it, but as far as I know, he's the one who popularized it. Put it this way, there's a guy named Peter Bogosian who they source as the original street epistemologist or the original person on the subject, but if, if it were not for Anthony Magnabosco, I would know, have no idea who Peter Bogosian actually is. So Anthony Magnabosco is the one who has popularized it in today's Twitterverse, in today's YouTube channel world. Um, now, the question we are going to be asking is, is street epistemology effective? Now, effective, I'm almost certain that it is. The more important question, as far as I'm concerned, is, is it fair? Is it a legitimate form of inquiry? Now, with Anthony Magnabosco, I am probably going to be arguing tacitly on his side. I'm going to be tacitly endorsing it as a legitimate form of inquiry. Let me explain. Um, Anthony, first of all, atheist going to atheist, right? I accept that, okay? If there's going to be atheists in the world, and yeah, there's going to be atheists in the world, I know, roll your eyes, there's going to be atheists in the world, and they're going to try and talk me out of believing as a Christian, they're going to try and, you know, convince me that my faith isn't real. I would far rather, if they were all like Anthony Magnabosco, that would make my life a lot easier then I would far rather they be Anthony Magnabosco's than like Aaron Ra. The Anthony Magnabosco version of it, I far prefer to the Aaron Ra version, which is like, ah, you're a Christian, you're stupid. Faith is, faith is <laughs> superstitious nonsense. You know, you believe in talking snakes, you believe in talking dogs. I far prefer the Anthony Magnabosco question, version, which is, you know, hi, can we talk a little? <laughs> it seems pretty cool. Pretty down to, can we chat? Okay, you know, if I ask you this question, would you say, would you say your confidence level in that is 70%? You know, I'm totally cool with it, in a sense. Now, there are other versions out there, for example. There are a whole bunch of lesser street epistemologists who followed in his wake, and then you have, like, the Pine Creek Doug version of it, which they mentioned in the chat. The Pine Creek Doug version, I do not endorse. His version is kind of like a street epistemologist, street epistemology meets counter-apologetics, meets mental jujitsu, meets gotcha questions. I mean, that's honestly what it is. Um, his version of it starts with a foregone conclusion. God does not exist and your belief in God is a delusion. Then he asks you questions so that you see that for yourself. Now that is not a legitimate form of inquiry. It's not even close, actually. And it's not allowed in a court of law. It's really not. It's called leading the witness. If you have a foregone conclusion in your mind and you ask questions to lead a person to that foregone conclusion, that's not legitimate inquiry. It's not evidence gathering. It's not even close to evidence gathering. It's called leading the witness. And someone will object in a court of law and go, Objection. Pine Creek, you're leading the witness. Sustained. Leading the witness. Because that's what he does. Now, to be perfectly fair to Pine Creek, Honestly, he's one of the more interesting atheist channels out there. I watch more Pine Creek than almost anybody else. And sometimes he has real conversations with Christians. He had Nathan Ormond on last week, and it was an interesting chat. As far as I'm concerned, it was a real conversation. But when he goes into street epistemology mode, it's fake. And they were talking about it in this chat, and I don't know if Doug was necessarily bragging that he's blocked by all these Christians, but he's been chased off of channels and blocked by Christians. I don't know if he was bragging about it, but he certainly seemed okay with it. Now, that's not a good sign. That's a sign that's not, wow, you're really bringing it to them and they're afraid of you. That's a sign that they don't think they're being treated fairly. So that is not a point in your favor. I, for example, have never been blocked by anybody. Not a single atheist has ever blocked me. And I don't expect any of them ever will. Actually, well, okay, well, that's not true. Caveat. There are some freak show atheists out there, some really weird atheists who I never interacted with. I swear to God, this is a real thing. <laughs> Weirdo atheists who I never interacted with, but all of a sudden I see that they block me. I'm like, why on earth am I blocked by you? Yeah, freaking coward. <laughs> Might as well be freaking coward. What on earth? Never. There's this one girl 
This one girl, I swear to God, never interacted her once on Twitter. Never interacted her anywhere. She has me blocked, and every once in a while, she'll show up on my TL and insult me for behind the blast. I swear to God. They'll go like, oh, yeah, you Christian? <laughs> like, disappear. <laughs> like, okay. So I'm blocked by a few random wacko, like, coward atheists. But no atheist that I've ever interacted with for real has ever blocked me. I consider that points in my favor. In defense of Anthony Magna Bosco, for example. Why I think Anthony Magnabosco's version of street epistemology tends to lean closer to true inquiry is because I don't think he's making more videos than he posts. Now, I don't know that for a fact, but he makes a lot of videos. And I'm guessing he has, he has three interviews that he records and he has three interviews that he posts, which means nobody's getting annoyed with him and storming off which means it's probably legitimate inquiry, or at least as close as someone... He's got a precept, okay? He's got a dog in the fight, and he's got an agenda. I get that. But the question is, is his agenda clouding the questions he asks, or is he asking legitimate questions and just trying to examine the me mechanics of belief? I think he's doing the latter, and that's what I'm going to at least be arguing for. I don't know that for a fact, you know? I don't know that for a fact. It just seems like he is. If he were... If he were doing, if he were leading people on and leading the witness, you'd see people getting annoyed with him and storming off. And there'd be a lot more interviews than he posts. There'd be like 10 interviews and he's posting three. And I think he's doing three interviews and posting three. And as far as I can tell, when he, when he comes up against resistance into somebody, his, his, his modus operandi is to slow down. Okay, this person's getting defensive, they're putting some walls up, so he slows down and shifts gears and tries to lower the defenses even more. Now, is he lowering the defenses so that he can ultimately show them that their belief is false? Probably. But, you know, so that's why I don't completely and 100% approve of it. But for example, though, Objectively Dan. Now, if you do not know who Objectively Dan is... He is a disciple of Anthony Magnabosco, actually. And I've had him on my channel. I've interviewed him. I've even streamed with him. He has a show on, on ACA called Truth Wanted. And I even guest hosted that show. As far as I know, I'm the only Christian who's ever guest hosted uh, on the ACA at all. Pretty sure that that's true. But de objectively, Dan, if, what he, if he is calling what he does street epistemology, it's influenced by Anthony Magnabosco because I wholeheartedly, unreservedly endorse Objectively Dan's approach without reservations, to whole, wholeheartedly, unreservedly. And I know for a fact that he is a disciple of Anthony Magnabosco and considers himself as such. So if that's street epistemology, I'm 100% for it. The Objectively Dan version of it, I'm 100% for it. As far as I'm concerned, he is just having real conversations with people and asking them real questions. Perhaps challenging questions, sure, I got no issue with that. Challenging questions to expose what they believe, I have no issue with that either. I don't necessarily have, an, have a problem with exposing the mechanics of somebody's belief. I just think there's some caveats that need to be involved. I'll, I'm going to hash this out with the Christians and talk about this with the Christians on Wednesday. So you should come check out the show. And Anthony, hopefully, if you're listening... Um, you know, I, I, you did say you might come on the channel. Hopefully you'll come on the channel and I can interview you and you can tell me directly. You know, I'm not going to, not going to, I'm not trying to gotcha you, you know, just see what you have to say about the subject and what you think you're actually doing and hear from straight from your mouth. Um, you know, I know you mentioned that you might, so you're invited and I will have free time coming up in January. So we'll see. Um, objectively, Dan has been on my channel. Now, if, he's, if he calls that street epistemology, what he does, then I'm 100% for it. Because he's just having honest questions where he's examining people's beliefs. Um, I don't necessarily fault somebody for having a presupposition when you ask questions. It's human. And I'll, I'll look further into Anthony Magna Bosco. He mentioned that he's got some street epistemology that he does with political beliefs. So I'll look at those. After, I, after we talk it out on Wednesday, I'll, I'll look further and I'll make more videos on the subject. Um, but in terms of his approach, the civility of the approach, the idea that, you know, it's, again, it's a hundred times better than the Aaron Ra, you know, foam at the mouth about Christians approach to trying to stop people from being a Christian. It's a hundred times more pleasant. So on that, on that account, 
I give him very high marks. Um, and if, Dan, if objectively Dan's, what he's doing is if he considers himself a disciple, then I give objectively Dan complete, complete, completely and wholeheartedly, unreservedly endorse his approach to the subject. Unreservedly. He, he, all he does is try to have real conversations with people. That's all he's doing. I know that for a fact. I've streamed with him, and I've had him on the channel. That's what he's doing. So we'll see. I will probably be trying to play devil's advocate, I guess. I guess, literally, <laughs> advocating for the, for the, the, the atheist guy. Um, I guess I will be tacitly endorsing the Anthony Magnum Bosco approach. But I want to really hear what, the, what my fellow Christians have to say and what they think. Perhaps they find it more manipulative than I do. I, I, I'm really interested to see other people's opinions. So, I hope you tune in, check it out on Stephanie's channel. And, Anthony, if you're listening, I hope you come by one day and have a chat. And, Doug, you're welcome, too. You know, I'm not going to play gotcha with you. I don't do that. Watch my interview with Paul. Watch my interview with Seth Andrews. I don't do that. It's not what I'm about. When people are on my channel, it's, it's a conversation. I'm just asking you questions, really. Um, I try to put my agenda, which is really good, by the way, really positive agenda, but I try to put my agenda on hold, which, like I said, it's a really positive agenda, it's a good agenda, but I put it on hold if you're an atheist sitting in, in my YouTube channel, and I put aside the fact, ideally you shouldn't even be able to know that I'm a Christian if I'm interviewing an atheist, you know, so you should only know that I'm a Christian because I'm so good and Christ-like, <laughs> yeah, you see, all right, anywho, so that is all for now, kids, I hope you come watch the Stephanie Stephanie channel, and I think I'm going to win. O overall, I think if we have a, you know, I'm going to win. So come check it out. That is all for now. Mass has ended. Go in peace. Amen.